Are you looking to start a home lab but don't want to deal with finding, purchasing, and setting up hardware? Do you want to host services outside of your home so you don't have to deal with dynamic DNS? Maybe that VPS you're running just isn't cutting it anymore. Today we'll be taking a look at bare metal servers hosted in the cloud. I've got a decent home lab set up, but I'm looking to get a little bit more experience when it comes to cloud services. I've used VPSs in the past and they work well enough. I found what I think at least is a pretty good deal on Hester's bare metal server auctions. They were having a Black Friday sale that removed the setup fees, which can be fairly substantial for a low cost box. The server I found has an i7-6700, 32GB of RAM, and a pair of 480GB SSDs. One nice addition is that it also came with Intel NICs, which tend to be better when it comes to compatibility and driver support. In this video we'll walk through my first steps that I took while setting up this server. To get started, first log into your Hetzner account on Robot, then go to the Servers tab. Click the server from the list, then go to Rescue. For the OS, you want Linux and 64-bit. If you have SSH keys uploaded, which I highly recommend doing, select the ones you want added to the rescue system. Now, click Activate Rescue System. This will set up a TFTP option on Hetzner's DHCP server to let you pixie boot into their rescue system headless. If you don't have any SSH keys, the root password will be displayed here on this page. To trigger this, we need to perform a restart on the server. If you don't have access to do this through an OS, go to the Reset tab and select Execute an Automated Hardware Reset, and then click Send. This will reboot the server the same as if it had a physical reset button. Then, we just wait for the server to boot, give it a minute or so to perform the full reboot, and then boot into the Pixie system. While we wait for that to come back up, let's copy the public IP address of the server from the panel, and we'll open up an SSH client such as PuTTY. If you have a profile set up with SSH private keys, select it now, and then paste the IP address of the server into the host name or IP address field in PuTTY. After about two minutes to let the server reboot, let's click open. You'll get prompted about the server's host key to save or connect once. If you get this, select connect once. Here, I get a warning about a security breach because I've previously connected to this IP and I have the host key saved to the OS. Because the host key doesn't match what I have saved, I get this warning. We can safely continue. Now that you're connected, we're going to log in as root, then issue the command install image to open the installer tool. You have options here for Debian, Ubuntu, CentOS, Arch, other images, old images, or custom images. We want other images, which has a few options for Proxmox. We'll do the image based on Debian Buster as it's the newest at the moment. Highlight it and hit enter. You can accept the notice that it's not supported then we'll hit enter on OK for this one. Now we'll see the config file. Let's change the host name to match the one I have in the robot panel. Everything else in here looks good, so let's hit save and then quit. Hit enter for OK, and then enter again for yes, and enter again for yes. Now, all we have to do is sit and wait for the automated installer to finish doing its thing. Once it does, we can enter reboot to reboot the system so it boots into our new Proxmox environment. Give it a little bit to come up for the first boot, and then we'll enter the public IP of the server followed by a colon and port 8006 to connect to the web GUI. I'd like to change the password from default, so I'll we'll SSH back into the server with my private key that was loaded from the installer. Log back in as root.
and then enter P-A-S-S-W-D to get prompted for a new password. Enter the password of your choosing twice. And then now let's go back to the Proxmox web GUI where we can log in as root with the password we just set. Now we can see our new Proxmox host. From here, I'll go configure the server and we'll be back once that's all set. So it's been a few days now and I've got the Proxmox server to a point where I'm pretty happy with it. I'm on the summary page right now so you can see things like my CPUs right here, the i7-6700. We can see RAM usage, CPU load, see the graphs of those same statistics. If I go down here to network, got three i've got the physical device then i've got two bridges one bridge goes to a lan where i have a second ip address for my OpenSense vm and then i have a lan network for anything that i want behind that firewall if i go down here to my disks i've got a very full lvm partition because i have a an lvm thin provisioned for my vms and then if i go to my VMs, I've got two currently. I have a firewall and a WordPress website. Firewall is running OpenSense, and it's what I do my videos on, so what the previous video was done on. And then the WordPress website runs the moa.tech. And then I have this Ubuntu 2004 Cloud in it template, which is a template that I can clone that has Cloud in it set up so that it makes it very easy to spin up new Ubuntu server VMs for any applications that I want to run for testing, production, anything like that. I've got my storage down here, my BX10, which is a backup appliance through Hetzner. Very, very easy to set up and helps provide backup for my servers, which is of course very important. Then I've got my local, which has things like my ISO images, any container templates, snippets and then i have my lvm thin that has my disks overall i've been very happy with the server i think it's pretty good value for the money considering by the time that i convert from euros to us dollars it's about 35 dollars a month which really isn't bad considering how much horsepower it actually has and what i can do with it that's what i've got for now thanks everybody for checking this video out and i'll catch you in the next one